If you had a unicorn, what would you do? We're going to talk about it on today's podcast. I've spent the last 20 years studying, teaching, and coaching people to find their greatness and take their lives to the next level. Along the way, it's become evident that emotions are at the root of everybody's successes and failures. Worry and fear are the enemies, and it's time to forge the armor and earn the tools to overcome the two things that could single-handedly destroy your future. Hi, my name is Michael Johnson, and I'm a life coach, a peak performance trainer, and I'm the emotions guy. It's time to take back control, control of how you feel, control of how you act, and control of how you experience life. It's time to become a lifer, a new breed of overachiever focused on living every minute to its fullest. We are responsible for how we feel, and no one and no thing can make us feel anything. Emotional mastery is our journey, and emotional education and intelligence is the key. We are lifers, and this is Magic for Life. What's up, lifers? Michael Johnson here with the Magic for Life podcast. I'm so excited that you joined me today because we're going to talk about unicorns, one of my favorite animals. Okay, well, kind of. But it's definitely one of my daughter's favorite, and so I thought we'd talk about unicorns. Now, unicorns are interesting because they clearly have magical powers right? Okay, so that means that they can grant wishes and things like that because they're magical, right? And if you've actually looked at or heard about unicorns, then we know that their horn is incredibly magical and powerful, right? Okay, so I know it's silly we're talking about unicorns, but in the business world, we talk about unicorns all the time. They're the companies that are somehow magically moving to the top and it's against all odds, right? They're the unicorns. They're the ones that are like, what the heck? Are they going to last or are they just going to have a big, huge upswing and then they're going to crash after that? But, you know, the reason we name them unicorns is because of that. There's something magical about it and we don't quite understand it and we don't quite understand the, the gist of it. That magical power is that there's something in what is going on that had huge possibility and it had huge potential. And all of that came from an entrepreneur like you or I or, or somebody that's in that phase of creating something amazing. And so what I wanted to talk to you today about was what would you do if you had that unicorn, right? What would you do if you had that unicorn and you could indeed imagine this amazing possibility? of what could be and what it could be about. You see, there's energy flowing around us. And for as maybe froofy as this is going to sound, maybe a little esoteric, it's okay, just hang with me for a second. There's energy around us and it vibrates and, and, and it resonates with us. And when we get in line with that energy, sometimes we can think of amazing possibilities. For example, years ago, this had to have been maybe 15, 20 years ago, I thought of this cool idea. What if you could go to the grocery store? Because I was really annoyed one day at the grocery store. And I thought, what what, what if we could go to the grocery store and not have to check out with a teller? I thought, well, gosh, you know, that would be pretty cool if we could just check out on our own. How could that even be possible? That was what my wife said to me. How could that even be possible? I said, well, you know, what if we could just scan the items like they do? That's all they're doing. They're just taking it through and scan. What if we could just scan it ourselves? And there were all sorts of challenges and this and that and whatever. And I'm not in the product creation business in terms of tangible products. I've never really been into that that side of things. But I thought it was really cool and I kind of mapped it out a little bit and thought it would be neat. And then I put it down and I didn't touch it ever again. Next thing you know, you obviously know the end of the story. We have self-checkout at grocery stores. Imagine that. What the heck? When I could say, well, that was my idea. And I have said that numerous times. But at the same time that I was having that idea, there were probably a hundred thousand other people that were also having that idea. 
and you've probably experienced this with something. If you are an entrepreneur out there, you have probably thought of an idea and then weeks or months or years later, you, somebody else created it and you go, ah, oh, I had that idea five years ago. Do you remember? And you start asking everybody, you remember I told you about this. I had this idea, but you didn't move on it. What you did was you imagined the possibility. You connected with the energy around you and in the universe as a whole, and you started to come up with an idea for a problem and you created the solution for it. As entrepreneurs, this is what we do. We imagine the possibilities and the biggest troubles we have, whether it be in business or in our personal life, outside of business, which sometimes they are connected deeply, right? But some of the biggest problems that we have relate to the fact that we stop imagining the possibilities. We stop thinking about what could be, about how grand it could be, and thinking about the craziness that we could create. <clears throat> and, it, and when we stop imagining the possibilities, that's usually when we get stagnant. That's usually when we as entrepreneurs stop being congruent and stop moving forward with the next thing. You see, this planet, our human race, is depending on you and me and our fellow entrepreneurs to create that next thing, to create the next thing that is going to help the human race, whatever that might be. And in order for us to do that, we have to gain the energy to imagine the possibilities. Now, to do that, we have all sorts of different phases, different things that we are doing in our world. And I don't know what is the best for you. If we chatted one-on-one, -on -one, I could probably help pull it out of you. But for some people, it's about getting back to the gym and working out, getting the energy they need to be able to portray that thing that they needed to portray or to create the thing they needed to create. So for some people, it's about changing your physical body and getting more healthy, getting more uh, energy on a regular daily basis. For some, it's about unblocking the internal blocks from the inside out. And in order to do that, you need some self-awareness. You've got to go in and learn yourself so that you can actually figure out what those internal blocks are. Now, you might be saying to yourself right now, I don't know what my internal blocks are something stopping me from moving forward and i totally get that i totally understand but there are processes and there are things that we can do to figure out our own internal blocks so that we can start to address them and overcome them and repurpose them and retool them if you need some suggestions please let me know Either comment below or send us an email at info at magic for life and I'll give you some direction. But there are ways to address your internal blocks so that you can overcome the things that have been holding you back from attaining that next milestone or that big goal or that championship or that win of whatever you're going after. And it starts really really does start with, again, learning yourself, but imagining the possibilities. If you can imagine the possibilities of what it is that you could do, you always start by brainstorming. You know this, whether it was in school on a project or working with another entrepreneur or whatever it is, the first thing we always do is we brainstorm. And that is us imagining the possibilities. The worst thing you can do, you know it and I know it, in a brainstorming session is start saying why you can't do the thing that you came up with. That is the best way to destroy a brainstorming session ever. In fact, you've probably had this. If you run a business, if you are already an entrepreneur and you've ever had a teammate, somebody in your group that comes in to this brainstorming session, they go, yeah, but how are you going to do that? Well, yeah, but how is that even possible? Well, how is that even going to be a thing? It kills the brainstorming session. So figure out who those are and uninvite them to your brainstorming meetings because you're not going to be able to imagine the possibilities. So this is your challenge. This is your goal on a regular basis, whether it's daily or maybe it's weekly or maybe even monthly, depending on your nature, right? If you're not much of a brainstormer, and you feel like you're not that creative, maybe you need to do it a little bit more often. 
if it's too easy for you, if that's the mode you always go into, then maybe you got to kind of back off a little bit and not do it on a daily basis because it might be overwhelming to your team. For me, I have lots and lots and lots of ideas. And sometimes I can see the look on my team's face when they cringe when I say I have another idea. Like, oh no, another idea, here we go. And we buck up and we go, right? But we have to, we have to learn ourselves to know what the best path is. Again, if you need help learning yourself, then let us know, we'll help you. Uh, we're there and we're available to be able to give guidance and to provide some mentoring and coaching, but let us know, right? But the point is, you have to actually imagine the possibilities and you have to spend time doing that. If you intend to get better at it, you have to do it more. I hope this helps for you today. If you know somebody that needs to hear this, uh, ask them if they'd like to hear about a unicorn. I'm just teasing. No, really share this uh, uh, episode with them. You can share it on any of the platforms, YouTube, uh, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever they might listen to it and uh, get them the information. If you liked this episode and it helped you in any way, please subscribe, like, give us a rating, a big thumbs up, whatever it is that you do on the channel you're watching it on. And we are so thankful that you're here watching uh, and participating with the Magic for Life podcast. We'll see you in the next episode. Take care. The great Tony Robbins said, success is 80% psychology and 20% skills. Crazy, right? 80% mindset and 20% mechanics? Yet if you're anything like me in your entrepreneurial adventure, you easily spend 100% of your time working on the mechanics. Listen, even though it's easy to get caught up in the mechanics, we all know we should work on our mindset. But for so long, the mindset tools that have been out there are so complicated. That's why I decided to put together the Mindset Workshop that will teach you the mindset skills you need using an easy framework that you can learn fast and use for the rest of your life. In this free, live, five-day mindset workshop specifically for entrepreneurs, I'll be teaching the step-by-step -step process to identify your core challenge that's holding you back from achieving your next big goal. Check it out at marketingyourmind.com.